All right, this is lesson 91. Welcome to algebra. Uh, right now, I'm at Six Flags, uh, enjoying the rides at Six Flags while you guys are enjoying algebra. I don't know which one I'd want, Six Flags or algebra. It's a tough call. Uh, but actually, the weather is. I'm actually recording this video, video the uh, Thursday night, the night before, um, and uh, the weather actually is. The weather forecast is pretty bad, so who knows? Maybe I'm soaked right now. Uh, you never know. So I'm going to go ahead and explain 91. So once you pull out your spiral notebooks, get those uh, get those pulled out. This is lesson 91. The day's date is uh, May 5th, May 3rd. Uh, so 5, 3, 13. Get those out while I just kind of make some general announcements. Uh, j announcement number one, 91 is going to be due first thing Monday. So uh, we'll get through as much of it today on video as we possibly can, but then the rest of it you're responsible for over the weekend uh, and uh, get, to get, get those things done. Um, now as I look at Lesson 91, you're going to laugh at me, but... Um, Actually, on Lesson 91, I didn't put any questions down for Lesson 91. Isn't that great? So uh, the new concept is actually very easy. And on the video, as I do the first couple problems, we're going to kind of modify a few of the questions so that I can include the new stuff on Lesson 91. Now, to be honest with you, well, no, I'll, I'll correct that as we go. So that, that won't be so bad now that I'm thinking about uh, something else. Anyway, here we go. We're going to do a domain and range. So basically, all we got to learn is uh, two terms. One term is called domain, and the other term is called the range. And Gang, this is this is this is like taking candy from a baby. This is this is that easy. Domain are all the x values. Domain is all the x values. I'll give you an example in just a second. And then range are all the y values. It's that simple. Anything that's an x, that's domain. Anything that's a y, that's a range. So, for example, if, if I gave you a table that looked like this up on the screen, so it has uh, so I've got zero, three, one, six, zero, negative two. All of these guys right here are the domain, and all of these guys right here are the range. So, if I said state the domain, you would say domain. You could put a colon, and then you could just say 0 and 1. Now, since 0 repeats itself, you don't have to write it twice down here. So it's just 0 and 1. Range. So you write, rewrite the, the word range, put a colon, and then uh, usually they put them in, 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 uh, in ascending order. So start with the smallest one. So negative 2, and then 3, and then 6. That's it. That's it. That's the new stuff. Okay. All you gotta be able to keep keep separate is domain and range. I'll give you. A, some people get them flip flop. To be honest with you. So here's a, here's a silly different way, uh, silly way of of uh, kind of remembering this. So if you have domain and range here, uh, which letter comes first in the alphabet? That's right, domain. So D comes first in the alphabet. L letter comes first in the alphabet over here. X Y Z. X comes first. So the letters that come first in the alphabet match up. D comes first, X comes first. You know, if you compare X and Y and D and R. So that's kind of how I remember it. And then R comes after D, so, uh, and then Y comes after X. So the range is the X values. Whew, I'm just, I just yawned. All right, so let's put that to the side. We'll do a couple problems, and then uh, we'll let you go. So I'm going to go ahead and work off a of boxed paper. Um, I'm going to start you on the back side. So uh, you're going to have to kind of stay with me here on the video since I'm not live. Uh, you're going to have to kind of shuffle papers fairly quickly. Get your boxes going real quickly uh, and stay up with me. Uh, that's kind of your task on this. So uh, hopefully right now you're shuffling papers, getting your homework out, finding lesson 91, all right, all that good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and um, actually start with uh, question number, 
I think 22. We'll start with question number 22. So find question 22, find box 22, and then uh, we'll do it. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put the picture down here, uh, or put the paper down so you can actually see it up on the screen. And this, basically, the directions for number 22 look like this. It says determine which of the following relationships are functions. Now we've done this one. We did it earlier this week. All right. And then it says explain why the function is or isn't a function. So we're starting with number 22. Well, how do you do this? We did this on Monday. Remember to identify a function, you use the vertical line test. So I'm just going to take a blue pen out. You just use a pencil and basically just draw vertical lines. As long as every vertical line touches the curve one place, then it is a function. And in this case, this is a function because each vertical line touches the curve only one time. So if I go to box number 22, here's box 22, blow this up a little bit, uh, we would say it's a function. Okay, so we'll say that first. And we say it's a function because every every vertical line touches the curve exactly one time. It's as simple as that. As long as every vertical line, every vertical line, touches the curve one time, it's a function. Simple as that. All right, why don't you do lesson or uh, question number 23. So move over, do 23. Uh, I'll give you a few moments here on the video to go ahead and uh, go. As a matter of fact, let me actually make a quick announcement uh, while you're working on 23. Don't have the sub stop the video. Just keep on trucking. So let the video just keep playing because I'll probably use quite a bit of time uh, to do this. So if we stop it, you won't get through the whole video. And I actually will post the video uh, on YouTube. So if you wanted to uh, review it, that would be perfectly fine. So let's do 23. I'll catch up behind you and give it a whirl. So question number 23, it's all you. All right, here's 23. Again, we use the vertical line test. And every vertical line that I draw touches the line only one time. So if I go to box 23, we would say, yes, indeed. It is a function. Make sure an underline fun for function. And then we would say, you have to defend it. Every vertical line. touches the curve exactly one time. And there is number 23. Let's keep moving on. Let's go to lesson 24 and uh, we'll do that one. So here's lesson, here's, I'm sorry, let's go to number 24. Sorry about that. Uh, and here we go. We got an input output table. Well, all we have to do is figure out whether or not this is a function, and then I'm going to modify the directions real quick. So kind of alert, alert, if you're not tuning in, uh, change in directions here. So number 24 says uh, we want to figure out if this is going to be an if this input output table is a function. Remember, for it to be function, every input value has to be paired up with exactly one output. Well, 8 is paired with negative 9, negative 5 is paired with 3, 0 is paired with 2, and 6 is paired with negative 8, and 9 is paired with 2. There are no repeats over here. And if there are no repeats over here, like if I had an 8 and that was paired with a, a 5, notice that 8 would be paired with a 9 and later on with a 5. Remember that? That you can't have. So this indeed is a function. And so we'll go ahead and find box number 24. And we're going to write two different answers. We're going to say it is a function. Make sure to underline the word fun because it's, it, it is fun. Uh, and we, we're going to say this. It is a function because every input, remember that's like an x value, is paired 
with exactly one output. And remember, an output kind of acts as like the Y. Now, we're modifying this. For number 24, we want to state the domain range. So we'll do domain and the range. Okay, so what are the, what's, what is the domain and what is the range? Well, we just went through it. The domain is all the X values or the input values. And the range is all the Y values or the output values. So let's go ahead and just put those in. Uh, and we usually put them in ascending order. So domain, uh, if I go over here, here's my guys. So this is basically the domain right here. So we'll go ahead and put them in order. So we'll start with negative 5, 0, 6, 8, and 9. So negative 5, 0, 5. Ah, there's no 5. There's no 5. How about 6, 8, and 9? There's the domain. And then the range are all the output values. So we'll start with negative 9. negative 8, 2, and 3. And that's it. All right, that was number... That was number 24. So that's all good. Let's keep pushing. Let's see, that was number 24. Okay, that was less than 90. Actually, there's another less than 90. Uh, I think we have to do number 25 and then 26. So let's do those next. So here's number 25. I'll put it on the screen. So 25 says develop, develop a table of solutions for the following relationship. And there it is. So let's find box 25. Keep in mind you have to do two equations. So you have to squeeze this in. You have to manage your room uh, very carefully here. So squeeze these guys in. So f of x equals negative 3x plus 1. All right. Uh, so let's choose some easy values. Let's start off with 0. That's an easy one. So we're going to do negative 3 times 0 plus 1. So there's that one. Simplify that. It'll be 0 plus 1. And f of 0 then is 1. So this is the first part. And if we were to make a table, because I think they want a table on this one, it would be 0 and then 1. All right, the next one, I'm just going to choose 1. There's no fraction on this one. The slope is not a fraction. So I'm just going to go ahead and do uh, choose an easy number like negative 1. Or, I'm sorry, like positive 1. And we got f of 1 equals negative 3 plus 1. And then if you simplify, you get negative 3 plus 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And then... Um, what do we got? We got 1 and then negative 2. So there's number 25 right there. All right, 26. Move on. Next one. 26 says, uh, determine whether or not this relationship is a function. So we have to figure out, you know, is this guy here a function? Well, how do we know if it's a function? If every x value is paired with exactly one y value, then it's a function. Well, how many, how many y's is the x paired with? This y is paired with only one, I'm sorry, this x is paired with only one y. And this x is paired with only one y there. So, it's a function. So, we go ahead and write function, and then we're going to defend it. And we're going to say that every input, or we can say x value, so every x is paired with exactly one y value. All right, now, alert, 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 alert. Hey, if you're not paying attention, tune in real quick. We're going to modify 26. Let's go ahead and state the domain and the range for 26. So if you're working ahead of me, Tune in and modify 26 real quick. I've got it up on the screen. You can do it right with me. So the domain for number 26, well, let's go back to 25. Remember, the domain is all the x values, and the range are all the y values. So let's plug them in. So this is 0 and 1 and negative 2 and 1. 
So there's the domain. And there is the range. Okay, that was lesson number 90. Uh, let's keep working backwards. I'm looking for an 89. Ah, number 17 is an 89. So let me go up here. 17. There it is. All right, so here's 17. I'll rewrite it. So we have x squared minus 1, 21 equals x. Let me write that so that's a little more legible. All right, so x squared equal, let's see, x squared minus 121 equals 0. How, how do you solve these? These are quadratic equations. Well, to solve any quadratic equation, you have to isolate the x squared. And to isolate the x squared, in this case, we have to eliminate this 121. And to eliminate the 121, we add 121 to both sides. and I get x squared is equal to 121. And remember, when you have an x squared, how do you get rid of the x squared? Or how do you get rid of the x? I'm sorry. How do you get rid of the squared? Yeah, just take the square root. But if you take the square root of one side, you have to take the square root of the other side. So we're going to go like this. We're going to go square root here, square root here. Remember, we have to include the plus or minus. So that plus or minus that I'm pointing to right there is important. So the square root of x squared is x. I bring down the plus or minus, and then I just I can punch in 121, square root of 121 in my calculator, and square root of 121 is 11. And there it is, without the radical. Some, some of us are still leaving the radical on there. Circle it. There it is. All right, why don't you do, uh, do number 18. So work ahead. I'll kind of just let the video keep running, and then uh, check number 18 as we go along. So go ahead, jump into 18, rewrite it, and get it started. I've got the first step down if you want to verify the first step. Now remember, don't take the square root until you get rid of this 49. So you got to get rid of the 49 first. So x squared equals 4 over 49. Once you get to that point, then take the square root. So square root, square root, plus or minus, and then x equals plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 49 is 7. And there it is, right there. Less, that, was, uh, that was question number 18 from lesson 89. All right, we're going to keep working our way backwards. Let's go to number, <coughs> let's go to number question 21. So 21, we'll right below that one right there. Question 21 says, well, let me write it out real quick. Um, the, the, <coughs> the equation they give us is y is equal to x squared minus 5. That's the equation. And uh, the questions ask us to determine, part A, determine the discriminant. So you got to remember what the discriminant is. Now, if you don't remember what the discriminant is, if you flip the page over, I think I put the discriminant on there. Did I do that or not? Ah, I didn't. Well, here's a little, here's kind of a way to cheat on this. Um, if you go to the front page and you find the quadratic formula, this guy right here, underneath the quadratic, or underneath the square root, that right there, circled on the screen, is the discriminant. So that's one way of doing it. So let's rewrite that. So we have b squared minus 4ac. Now this one's tough. Because you got to figure out what B is, and B is not easy. You know what A is. A is easy. That's just the 1. This guy is not B. The 5 is the C. Remember, when there's an A and a C and nothing between them, that B then is 0. We still have a lot of people struggling to remember that when there's an A and a C and no B, B is 0. 
So we're just going to plug this guy in right here. So B is 0. <clears throat> A is 1. And C is negative 5. All right, it's just a matter of now multiplying through and um, getting your answers. So we have 0 here. Now that's going to be, let's see, negative 4 times 1 times negative 5. That's a negative times a negative. That'll give us a positive answer. 4 times 1 times 5 is 20. And then I get tw 20 right there. So there's our answer to the first part. That's part A. All right, now we're looking for part B. Part B asks, and I'm back on your sheet now, it asks to determine the number of solutions. Well, you determine the number of solutions based upon the sign of this guy. This, if this is positive, do you remember how many solutions there were? This is where having a note card is going to be helpful. If it's positive, you have two solutions. All right, and then the last part, they want you to graph this. So we're going to go down 5. Remember, this is our y-intercept, the negative 5. And we have to graph the parabola so it's going up, and it passes through uh, the x-axis twice, because so, I have two solutions here. So we'll just kind of draw something like this. And there it is. And it passes through once and then twice. There's lesson, or there is number 21, and that was lesson 88. All right, now I'm going to go find a lesson 87. I should have an 87 on here. Where'd you go, 87? Ha! There you are. All right, 87 is on the other side. It's lesson, or it's uh, question number 16. Uh, let's rewrite the equation uh, that they give us first, and then we'll actually do it. So negative uh, 28.6 equals negative 72.3 plus... 8.6x. Alright, and we want to go ahead and solve for x. Uh, and at the end, we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So the first step uh, is to get rid of all the numbers on the same side as the x. So I have to get rid of the negative 72.34, I'm sorry, negative 72.3 and the 8.6. So we're going to add 72.3. Okay, and then add 72.3 together, or add 72.3 uh, and negative 28.6. All right, now when I do that on the calculator, I get 43.7. Let me try that one more time and see if I agree with that. Do you all agree with that or not? Let's try that one more time. So I got... Uh, Let's do 72.3 minus 28.6. Yeah, 43.7. That's what I got. Unless I wrote it wrong. Yep, that's right. So I actually have the key wrong in the back. I'll have to check that and correct that in a bit. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, carry down the 8.6x. So there's that. And then we have to divide by 8.6. And then I divide 43.7 and 8.6. So I'll show my calculator up here. So divide this by 8.6. And there's what I get. I get the 5.08. So 5.08. And I think they want us to round to the, what do they want us to round to? All right, the 10th. So um, the 0 is in a 10th column right there. And so we leave the 5, and the 8 will go away, but the 8 makes the 0 go up to 1. So that's going to be 5.1, and that equals x. So there's, there, there it is. All right, now that was question 16, and question 16 from was, less, was from lesson 87. Now I'm looking for an 86er. Ha! There it is. 86, lesson number, or question number 7 and question number 8. Let's do those two. So 7 and 8. All right, so I've got number 7. All 
All right, there's number seven. All right, so we have to multiply these together. So remember, this is a kind of a two-stepper. You have to multiply the numbers out in front, and then you have to multiply the 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 tens. But when you multiply the bases, you add the exponents, and we're still struggling to remember that. So let's go ahead and multiply the numbers out in front together. So it's 0.36. Um, if I can do it, 0.36 times 0.15, and uh, when I do that, for me, I get 0.54. So I'll go ahead and transfer that over real quick and see what that gives us. I'm going to try that one more time because I have a feeling I may have made a mistake. Oh, I did. I plugged that in wrong. So 0.36 times 0.15. There it is. So it's 0 0.054. There it is. So 0 0.054 times 10. Now I have to add my exponent. So that's going to be 6 plus a negative 3. And that's 5. Okay, now the directions for this particular one, number 7, says we have to place our number in proper scientific notation. Proper scientific notation is not going to be 0 0.054. Uh, I have to move the decimal bet from here to between the 5 and the 4. So it'll be 5.4 times now what happened to this number it was 0 0.054 and then it became 5.4 so that became bigger and if that becomes bigger this becomes smaller or the exponent becomes smaller well how much you know how many spots did this move well that be that got bigger by 2 so this is going to have to get smaller by 2 so that's going to be 5 minus 2 and 5 minus 2 then becomes 10 to the third. And there's the answer right there. Okay, let's slide over and do number 10. Or, I'm sorry, do number 8. So here's number 8. So we get 6 times 10 to the negative fifth over 0 0.25 times 10 to the squared. All right, in this case, I divide these numbers. Now, what do I do with my exponents? Well, when I divide my bases, I subtract my exponents. So let's divide my numbers out in front. So that's 6 divided by 0.25. And when I do that, I get 24. OK, now what does this look like? This is I'll show the extra step on this. So that's negative 5 minus 2. That's what it really would be because you're subtracting the exponents. So I'll go one more step. 24 times 10, negative 7. Now the directions on this one are a little bit different. They don't want you to leave your answer in scientific notation. They want you to put it in decimal form. Well, that means that I need to, when this is negative up here, that means I need to move my decimal to the left seven places. So I'm going to start over here. There's my 24. Here's my decimal. I'm going to move it over seven times. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put a new decimal. Fill on all the humps with zero. So I get a zero here, a zero here, a zero here, a zero here, and a zero there. So my answer is going to be zero point one, two, three, four, five. Five zeros, and then a two and a four. And there it is right there. Bam. There's number 8. Done. All right, I'm moving on to, that was 86. Let's see if I can find an 85. Where is 85 at? 85. Ha, I found it. Actually, 85 we already did because that was number 25 uh, on the problems, or on the sheet. And uh, we did that one along with lesson number, or with, we did 25 and 26 together. Okay, so that was an 85. Where's an 84? 84. Where are you at? Ah, there it is. Oh, this is a good one for us to do. These are the ones that we still struggle on. So that's number 6. Let's do number 6 together. So we're going to do 4x to the negative 12th. I'm just rewriting the problem right now. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. I'll give you a moment to rewrite it. 
And then we'll do this one together. <coughs> okay, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in my uh, my two two fraction lines. Now here's just a tip. Just going to do it to kind of help you out here as we go along. If you see a square, that's a tip off that you're going to have two parentheses. So I'll have two parentheses in the numerator here and two parentheses in the denominator on that one. So just a kind of a tip off. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of talk about the problem, and then I'm going to let you do it a little bit, and then we'll do it together. So this one right here, this is a difference of two squares. So you're going to do difference of two squares. This bottom one, this 12, that you can't do anything with it. This numerator, now let me ask you a question. What does 4 and 12 have in common? Isn't that a 4? So that's pretty straightforward. So you're going to factor out a 4 here. And this is a front seat, back seat problem. Your front seat passengers are going to be 1 and 2. And your back seat passengers are 1 and 3. All right. Why don't you do, do, the, num do the numerators first. And then I'll come back and I'll help you with the, uh, with the denominator. So I'll, I'll kind of just let the video run. And you give those a whirl. So you start with the numerators. Try those. Check a neighbor. And then I'll call you back. Go. Okay, let's see what you got. Uh, if you pull 4 out of the numerator, then you'll have an x. And then, let's see, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So it should be x minus 3. So your numerator should be 4 times x minus 3. Your other numerator, this is a difference of 2 squares. So the square root of 4 is 2. So you have a 2x and a 2x, a plus and a minus, and then the square root of 1 is 1. So you should have 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. Okay, let's check out that denominator because that's a tough one to do. Um, let's just get it started at least. So we're going to go ahead and put the x's in there. Last, see, so we got plus and minus. We'll try 1 and 2. So here's 1 and 2. And we'll try the 1 and 3 and see if, see if our first stab works. If it doesn't, then we'll switch it. And I can see right now it's not going to work. So this is, a, this is actually a 2x there. And then the outside, these two guys are negative 3x. That's negative 1. And we want negative 5. So if it doesn't work, you just take those guys, the back seats, and you have them switch cars. So this is a 3 and a 1. Now let's check and see if I got it working here. So 3 times 2 is 6. That's negative 1. That's 5. I want negative 5. So if my signs are off, then I flip-flop my signs. So I'll make this guy negative and this guy positive. All right, there it is. I got it. And then the rest of it is just canceling. I think you all can cancel pretty easily. So this guy cancels with this guy. So you can cancel a 2x plus 1. You can cancel the x minus 3 and the x minus 3. The 4 and 12 can cancel, so the 4 goes to a 1, the 12 goes to a 3. And so what are you left with? You're left with, let's see, numerator is going to be 2x minus 1, and the denominator is 3. There it is. Voila. Done. Number 6. Moving on. All right, let's see, what do we got next? So that was 84. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead. Let's see, what is, that was 84. Where's an, is there an 83 anywhere? 83. I think you guys are okay on 83. Um, let's go to, let's do number 3 and 4, because I got probably enough time to get those two done, or at least started, and then that'll be about it for the video. So 3 and 4. I know 3, three is still kind of annoying for us, so let's do number 3. So number 3. So you have negative 5, y to the negative 3, z to the negative 7, over 24, z to the 8th, x to the 4th, 
x to the negative sixth. Okay. So what do we've got? Um, I've got some negative exponents on the top, and I've got a negative exponent on the bottom. I think the first thing, this is what I think most of you do, is move all the negative exponents. So let's move these two downstairs. Let's move this guy upstairs. Let's do that first. So there's the 5 and 24. I'm just going to rewrite all the positive ones because those aren't going to move. All right, now I'm going to take these two and move them downstairs. So y cubed z to the seventh. Move this x to the negative sixth upstairs. Make sure when you switch levels, you change the signs. OK, now let's think about this. There's nothing I can reduce on the negative 5 and 24. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite those. All right, let's do the x's first. I've got x's on two different levels. Now remember, when x's are in different levels, one in the numerator, one in the denominator, what do I do with my exponents? I subtract them, right? So this is going to be 6 minus 4, and that's 2. And remember, your answer goes in the numerator when you do that. OK, now let's look at the denominator. I only have one y, so I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite that one. But I've got two z's. i got z to the 8th and z to the 7th. If they're in the same level, I add their exponents. So 8 plus 7 becomes z to the 15th. That's it. There's nothing else I can do. So there's my answer right there. All right, 24. This is the last one. Well, I'm sorry, number 24, the last one. Here it is. Negative 3, x to the negative 12th, y squared, z, and then cubed. All right, this is the bumblebee rule, right? So we're gonna the three is gonna multiply himself times all the exponents. Don't forget that three has an exponent and the z has an exponent. That's what we're forgetting a lot of. All right, so ready? So three with the negative, that's three negatives, gives you a negative. Three cubed, because one times three is three. X to the negative twelve times three is negative thirty-six. Let's see, that's gonna be six there, because two times three is six, and then z cube. This is going to give us some outrageous numbers. This is going to be an enormous number. All right. Um, all right. This x is negative, so let's move him downstairs. So I get negative 3 to the 8th. No, I lied. Negative 3 cubed. y to the 6th. z cubed over x to the 36th. All right, and then let's substitute our numbers. I'll go over here and move move over just a little bit. So let's do 3 cubed. What is 3 cubed? That's 27. So that's negative 27. Y is 3 to the 6th. Z, I think, is negative 2 cubed all over X, which is negative 1. All right, and the rest of this is pretty much straightforward. So this is negative 27. I got to do 3 to the 6th. That's 729. 2 cubed, that should be negative 8. And negative 1 to the 36th, that's just plain 1. And then I just multiply the numerators together. Two negatives are going to be a positive. And then 27 times 729 times 8, that's 157,464. There it is. Hey, have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, or see you on Monday.